Okay, in the previous video, we went in and we manually created a watershed um, within QGIS based on an existing DEM um, that we converted to contours and then um, manually drew in this vector layer here, polygon layer. Um, in this video, I'm just going to show you briefly how to do the exact same thing, um, but within uh, AutoCAD Civil 3D. Um, and basically, we're going to use these contours and export them to um, Civil 3D and then perform basically the same um, function of manually drawing in um, the watershed, but then being able to have that object um, in those layers within Civil 3D. So we've already um, created this contours layer and saved it. So we're gonna just open up Civil 3D. Um, so I have a blank Civil 3D here. Um, and the first thing we need to do is actually go into the settings tab here and update our drawing settings, edit drawing settings, to set it to the proper coordinate system. So whenever we do bring in the shape file, it will know basically where it is in the world and how to read um, those coordinate system values. Okay, so we used Oklahoma State Plain North Zone and it's the NAT 83 um, datum. So we'll come in here and we'll zoom down to USA, Oklahoma, and then drop down. So we want the NAD 83 Oklahoma State Plain North Zone, and we want it in US feet measurements. So hit OK. And so just one thing to note if, if you're unfamiliar with setting drawing settings, um, and setting coordinate systems, one thing that pops up is this geolocation tab. Um, and once you set a coordinate system, this will pop up and we'll come back to that later, but just note that that does come in. So to bring in a shape file, there's a couple ways, but I'm just gonna show you the, um, the code. And so we basically type in map import. We'll click on that. Okay, so it asks for an Esri shape file. So we have our desktop and so I'll click contours two, which we created in the previous video. And so now this pops up. Um, so we have our input layer, drawing layer, and it shows the coordinate system that it's bringing it in, which is good. And basically we don't have any points in this layer, so we can kind of forget about that. But it basically if we did, this is, a way it converts um, those to AutoCAD point um, files. But a couple things we need to do. One is the data here. We do want to bring in some of the attribute data with these contours, um, specifically the elevation values. So I wanna click on here and click this little ellipsis. So right now it's, it defaults to not importing attribute table, but we do want to. So we click create object data um, and so the object data table to use obviously is the one for our shape file. And so we want to select the fields. So we really didn't have much within here, but it does have an elevation. So we don't really need all these feature IDs. Um, we just want the elevation of each line. Hit OK. OK. And then another thing, um, because um, the way a, what a polyline is in Civil 3D versus what a polyline is in um, QGIS is a little bit different. Um, we have this button here to import polygons as closed polylines. So if we have a contour and it essentially ends, it, it has it comes back onto itself in a circle, say the top of a hill point. Um, AutoCAD would initially think of that as a polygon. Um, but we don't want to treat it like that. We want to treat each of these as a polyline specifically because they're um, contour lines and um, we want to be able to, to use them as such. So we want to check this button. Um, and basically now we can hit okay and 
there's quite a few objects in there. It's a fairly large area. Um, and again, this is one foot contours, it takes a minute. And like always, because AutoCAD, when you open it, the basically the XY is set at zero, zero. And now we're importing something into a coordinate system that is set pretty far off of zero. Um, nothing shows up. So we need to zoom, so Z, and zoom extends, so E. And now we have our contours here, okay? And let's kind of zoom in a little bit. But now we can highlight each one and it comes in as a polyline. So we can select that polyline, which obviously has millions of vertices and it's kind of crazy. But if you come over here in the properties, and if you don't have properties pulled up, um, just type MO and you'll get the properties dialog box. But again, it shows that it's a polyline and we can set the layer, which it created a layer for the contours here, um, which is nice. And the interesting thing, and, and this is a little bit confusing, but it doesn't have an elevation associated with it um, like a 3D polyline would, um, but it has it within this field down here. So it says the elevation. So you could go in, back through and manually set all of these, and I'm not 100% sure if there's a better way to go through and set these elevations to be able to use this like real contours in Civil 3D. These are basically more um, descriptors, and just for a visual. Um, but now you can see that that data is associated with it. Um, and again, that's because we set, set that when we imported it. Okay, so now let's escape out of there. And so now, again, we have the same, same contours we created in QGIS. So again, we had that little bit of an issue in QGIS um, that when you bring in, um, for whatever reason, when you use, and I don't know if this works for all state plane coordinate systems, but specifically the Oklahoma state plane coordinate system, and I think maybe just the feet, um, US feet coordinate systems, um, the quick map services plugin, the maps don't display um, properly. So, but what we can do in Civil 3D, again, I mentioned the geolocation tab. And now we can go and AutoCAD has Bing imagery available. And we can click on Map Aerial. And hopefully, for one, this will validate that this came in in the right place, which it did. And now we have a little bit of background information to help understand this a little bit so now what we want to do again is just manually draw in um, our watershed area so I'm going to change the color here so it'll be a little bit easier to see so just the dark blue and again if we remember we had to we're looking at this point right here as our discharge point um, and what we're creating the watershed for. So again, there's a little creek channel that flows, and here you can really see how this flows underneath the road, that you have that break point, but um, so that creek flows under the road. And again, here, um, you can kind of view, there's a little bit of a channel and most likely a pipe here that the outflow from that pond. Um, so basically we're looking at everything south of this creek and everything west of this pond. So we want just the polylines um, to do this. And so again, this will flow right along the roadside ditch to a point about in here. And we're just gonna again, manually just draw this in. Um, and kind of work our way around and because this is manual, it's not going to be exactly the same as it was before, but we could make it so if we needed to. So we'll come up to this ridge line to about right here. And now again, we need to separate water that's flowing into that pond versus down this way. And so we'll just kind of work our way down here. And then basically, because this is going to come straight to here, I can hit C for close. 
and it pops that in. So now that we've created a closed polyline feature, we can just select it. And now we have an area that already pops up um, here. And again, this would be in feet squared because this is the coordinates system that we're using. Um, but we can convert this to acres for what we need it for and using the rational method. And again, the other data that we need is just the flow length and the elevations. Um, so flow length is a very simple process. We'll just take our polyline, and I think we kind of drew it in through here to about there. And again, we can just click on that and get a length. Um, and for the elevations, it's a little trickier. Labeling is a little bit more tricky in um, AutoCAD for labeling these, but we kind of know the contour that it's based out of. And we can just click. And so now we look, and it's 573 feet. So that'll be our high point elevation. And then we'll zoom down here. And what's the closest contour here? Oh. Sorry, it kind of froze up a little bit. Well, okay, I guess we clicked on one contour that was a little too big. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I clicked out of it, okay. Um, we'll click on this one because that'll be a little bit easier. So 546, so that's probably, so I think we're here about 546, 545, I think is what we called this last time. Um, so now we have our high and low elevations. Um, so again, that's pretty simple, um, pretty easy way to bring in a shape file from QGIS or any GIS um, into Civil 3D. And sometimes it's just a lot easier to manipulate, um, to draw in your polylines um, and to get uh, measurements, more specific measurements of those areas. So another way to create a watershed um, within Civil 3D. Thanks for watching.